Okay, so good morning, everyone, and uh, welcome to this masterclass, and we're delighted to have you here. It's um, a real pleasure to have Joe Houghton with us uh, this morning, and Joe is going to share his time and wisdom with us in terms of this masterclass, which is on the very important and uh, interesting topic for all of us at the moment in terms of working from home. And we were just chatting beforehand uh, about Zoom and the very platform that we're on mm -hmm. and how it has become uh, almost kind of pervasive in our, our psyche over the last year. I mean, we were just reflecting that if you ask someone kind of uh, 14 months ago about Zoom, there was probably a 70% chance that they weren't familiar with it. They, they would have been familiar with kind of Skype or other technologies, perhaps. Um, WhatsApp was certainly in the space, but this has really, you know, um, uh, become the power horse of, of the pandemic and uh, a remarkable advent that allows us to have the opportunity to receive Joe's wisdom this morning. Um, the IMCA is doing this on a pro bono basis as part of our, our ethos, and uh, we're delighted to have our new president, John Byrne, here with us this morning. And uh, it's, I suppose, um, part of uh, where we are and who we are in terms of sharing best practice and knowledge. And certainly within the, the pandemic period, this has gone from strength to strength in terms of the series of masterclasses we have. And to that end, we have a few coming up. We have uh, Fiona O'Connor. Uh, next on the, the 4th of February, and she's looking at, uh, I suppose, navigating to a safe harbour in terms of resilience and positive frame of mind. Uh, we've got Professor Joe Mahoney, uh, another world-class speaker, coming up on the 11th on the whole area of consulting and uh, that particular niche. Jim Power, the economist, is speaking to us, and I was chatting to Jim there a couple of days ago, and we're going to do a snapshot on what the Biden presidency has had uh, in that short period, uh, just to have a look at, uh, you know, where it's going and what kind of uh, policies that have been put in place since he's come in yesterday and just have a look at the impact from the Irish perspective and how that's going to be about. And then we have Sharon McLean, another world-class speaker from Canada uh, on the 11th, uh, who's going to talk to us about uh, digital communications and where that's going and how it's moving forward in terms of state-of-the-art thinking and particularly in terms of the, the platforms we're using. So, and best practice um, in that space. But you don't need to take notes, folks. I'll be sending uh, the love note out to you afterwards just to update you uh, on the uh, the events that we've coming up. The IMCA uh, itself is open for uh, membership in terms of consultants, and we'd welcome you to have a, a chat with us. You can find our details on www.imca.ie. And again, we'll be sending out those links. We're on LinkedIn, Twitter, Eventbrite. So, you know, you'll be familiar with all those platforms and we'd ask you to give us a follow. And equally and finally, uh, I suppose I would ask that you... Um, be mindful that this has been recorded from a GDPR point of view. If you're not comfortable with that, please be advised and step off at this point. Um, uh, no hand or no foul. So just to be, uh, be mindful that we will be sharing the recording afterwards um, and be sending out emails to you um, on the notes that I've just spoken to. Conscious of your time, conscious that the coffee is getting cold, conscious that we're, uh, you know, looking towards the end of the week and we're on Thursday and, and, and you can see the end in sight at this point. So without any further ado, I'm going to hold over, hand over to, to Joe, uh, who's going to take the ship of state out and uh, talk to the very essence of what we're here on on virtual platforms and how to do it and work from home. Joe, take her away. <clears throat> Thanks very much, Pat. Um, yeah, nice, nice to be here. Um, it's uh, yeah, this is what we're all facing at the moment, isn't it? I, I'm sat at my kitchen table um, with um, my two children who are nine and eight, um, sitting upstairs, um, you know, under strict instructions to to try and be quiet and not fight for the next hour. Um, I've given them their iPads and, and, and access to whatever they want to play with for the next hour. But this is kind of what we're dealing with, isn't it? You know, um, so we're going we're gonna to just talk about this um, today. Um, I'm going to share a few tips and, and tricks that, that I've picked up um, over the years, not just over the last eight or nine months um, about um, working from home. And We've got the chat window open. Pat's going to kind of keep an eye on that. I've got it open next to the screen as well. So I'll try and keep an eye on the chat and answer questions. Please throw any any questions or or ideas that you've got as well. I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of power in the room um, with, with everybody who's on. Um, and I'm sure we've all got little tips and tricks um, that we've picked up as well. So we can use the chat as a fantastic resource when we are working online. Um, these days um, to gather all that kind of information and uh, this is something that I've been recommending to people for months but a lot of people don't seem to know about it if you have a look at the chat window you see down at the bottom where it says type message here there's a little three dots icon 
uh, just to the right of that. And towards the end of the meeting, if you click on that little three dots icon, you can save the chat. And that saves the chat down as a text file onto your computer. So if you use the chat to, you know, just throw in information and good links and recommendations for books and all that kind of stuff, it then becomes a very useful resource that you can save off later on. So I'd encourage everybody to, to, um, to share their ideas and their thoughts in the chat as well as post questions and we'll, we'll try and uh, wrangle those as we, as we go along, if that's okay. I'm just going to try sharing my screen because I've, I've got a deck to work through. So we'll, we'll, we'll kind of work through a deck, but we'll use that as, as a basis for, you know, as I say, chat and, and discussion um, as, as far as we can. So, so please, um, please feel free to, to, to kind of do that as well. And see if I can see a few familiar faces coming on. Morning, Katrina. Morning, Sharon. Um, good to see you. So, uh, so yeah, work on, working from home. Good, good stuff. So, I mean, we've got, what, 45, 50 minutes um, and then a wrap up. So, um, you know, how do we make the best of working at distance? Um, I, I'm, I, I kind of split my thoughts down into, into three kind of sections, if you like. So, you know, taking, taking our roles, um, how, how, do we, how do we make the best of this as individuals? Um, working from home, how do, we, how do we set up our own personal workspaces and, and all this kind of stuff? Um, many of us are involved in some kind of team leadership, um, whether we're line management or whether we're consultants, you know, running a remote team of some kind or another. Um, so we'll just have a quick look at the kind of, you know, that aspect of things and, and how we can how we can kind of work from home effectively as a team lead. <coughs> and then and then just some brief links, really, um, to, to be thinking about if you're actually an employer. Um, because there are some issues um, around around employment as well. Um, I, I, I kind of reached out to a couple of couple of people I know. I, I see Voltage have just come on, um, so so I don't know who's on from Voltage, but but anyway, that they they sent me a little PDF uh, of some of the tips that they share um, as as an HR kind of consultancy, um, and I'll I'll pass that on to Patrick, and he can make that available to everybody as well. Um, but as I say, you know, throw your, throw your ideas into the chat as well. So, so hopefully we'll, we'll give you some ideas and some resources um, by, the end of, by the end of today. Um, it, it was terrifying a bit for when Pat kind of called me um, a few weeks ago. Hi, Joyce from Voltage. Great. Good to see you, Joyce. Hi. Uh, it, it was a bit terrifying when Pat rang me up and said, um, Joe, we would like to run a masterclass on working from home. I mean, you know, talk about putting the pressure on. Um, I don't know whether this is going to be a masterclass or not. It's just going to be me sharing some thoughts and ideas of, about how I do it. But I have been working from home for effectively about 20 years. Um, the last time I can remember having a formal office that I used on a regular basis was, I think, about probably about 1992, 1993, when I got my first European role and I handed back the keys to my, my office at that point. Uh, and, and spent 20 years on planes and trains and automobiles. Um, and even now, I mean, most of, my, most of my work is done from home, even though I, I teach up at the Smurfit Business School um, and I'm a management consultant and, you know, all that kind of stuff. Basically, home is the base. So I, I am an experienced online worker and educator. Um, when the kids were growing up and they're nine and eight now, we, we spent quite a number of kind of uh, years, about half time in Africa with my wife's parents uh, as, as Penny's mum was sick and, and, and eventually died. Um, and, and for those summers, um, I, I was using Skype uh, and I was doing management consulting um, to clients in Ireland and around the world via Skype. So, so you know, Zoom is, is maybe easier perhaps than a lot of these other tools were, um, but the tools have been around for a long time um, and, and more than me have been using them for a long time as well. And you can do a tremendous amount through, through these tools. Um, so as I say, I, I have this kind of portfolio career. I, I, I do a bit of consultancy. Um, I run the Masters in Project Management up at the Smurfit Business School. I co-wrote that program back 15 years ago and, and have directed it ever since. Um, I run a photography training business and, and through COVID, 
um, have built out a side of that business doing um, club photography talks um, all around the world. I'm doing three or four of those a week at the moment. So although this has been a very strange experience for us all, and we're now all having to figure out how do we work from home and, and how do we wrangle the kids and, and the homeschooling and juggling the internet connection uh, and all that kind of stuff, you know, um, I think it, it is doable if you organize yourself and if you, if you kind of look ahead a little bit, but you do have to do some work to set your home up to become uh, an effective workspace. So, uh, so hopefully that's what we're going to kind of talk about today. So this, this, this thing about remote working and <clears throat> Pat said, you know, the IMCA and, and myself as well today, um, this is, this is pro bono, um, you know, and, and it's kind of a little bit of giving back. Um, I think um, just, just trying to, just trying to help everybody skill up. Um, so, so, so that's the idea of today. This came out last week. I um, don't know whether you kind of caught sight of it in the, in the news. Um, the, the new national remote work strategy for Ireland was, was published. And now proposals to be delivered by the end of the, the year, proposals to, to be delivered by the end of the year. So, so, you know, when this actually takes effect is, is, is unknown at the moment. But it's symptomatic of a, a wider movement uh, in France, Already, for instance, there is a right to disconnect. There are, you know, legal limits imposed now on um, workers in terms of um, when they have to be online and when they don't have to be answering emails or, you know, taking phone calls and stuff like that. Um, I think the last six, nine months has, has very much focused attention on the fact that we're probably never all going to go back to the office. So some of us will, will be working from home permanently. Some of us will be working from home on a, you know, number of days a week basis. Um, there's a lot of people have realized they don't want to commute. Um, I certainly hate the commute when I have to, 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 to jump in the car. So things like remote working hubs are going to become a thing, um, even if they're not already. Um, and that's going, to off, that's going to give us some, some, some uh, interesting possibilities. I think even now we're still in the honeymoon period of working from home around things like tax issues. And, and that's one of the reasons I, I reached out to Joyce and, uh, and, and Federica and, um, and, and Ingrid at Voltech, um, because they, you know, they, they deal with HR issues and they're advising people all the time. So, so things like tax issues, um, insurance issues, um, you know, personal liability and work liability, all that stuff. I mean, if you go back to the legislation, just because we're now sitting at home at a kitchen table, it doesn't obviate the fact that as an employer, there are liabilities and, and there are things that you need to, you know, make sure your people are still safe uh, and, and that the equipment that they're using is fit for purpose, all that kind of stuff. So there's going to be a big review of all that stuff. And, and if you are working from home, um, either as an individual or as an employer or as a team lead, you need to look at that stuff. And I would suggest sooner rather than later, because I think I would be surprised if this year we don't see a slew of cases of people bringing actions for all the stuff that, that has happened at home, which otherwise would have happened, you know, in an office environment, perhaps. Um, so, so I've given the link there in the, in the slide deck to the, um, that strategy document. Um, and we will make the slide deck available. Um, I, I think Pat, you'll send that out with a video um, as, a, as a, a downloadable link to everybody um, uh, in the next day or two. So, so, so all the links that you see on these slides, you, you'll get, uh, and you'll be able to you'll be able to kind of have a look at. <clears throat> I was talking to Pat yesterday about this module, you know, this this session, and, and he said, oh, you know, f focus on practical stuff and, and, and whatever. Um, but I left this slide in and I'm not going to apologize, Pat, for doing that because, <laughs> because, because to be honest, the practical stuff doesn't really kind of matter a whole lot if your head isn't in the right place. And, and I don't know about you, but for me, the last six, eight months has been, has been very up and down. I've had, you know, periods of time where I felt um, isolated. I have felt fearful. Uh, I've felt, you know, all kinds of different kinds of emotions. The cabin fever sets in and stuff like that. And, and I consider myself to be very lucky because I have a wife and two kids and, you know, a relatively 
as far as we any any of us have a relatively normal home life if you like um <clears throat> i'm not living on my own um i'm not feeling totally disconnected but we've got to look after each other and we've got to look after ourselves um and i think we've got to one of the things with, with working from home is pre-covid and post-covid are different worlds you know most of the time we didn't have the kids at home um, we didn't have multiple needs to perhaps use the computer you know if penny's got a client she's a psychotherapist um, then at the moment she's doing most of her client work online and um, so maybe we've got to come off the internet while she does the client to make sure that the zoom call is, is nice and solid um, a practical tip that i would encourage everybody to to look at if you can is upgrade your broadband um, i upgraded my broadband last month um, i went from 150 meg um, now i'm in lucan you know so so we've got good access to fast broadband but but i signed up for, for the vodafone one gig <clears throat> one gig broadband uh, Lucan's a part, part of the country, you can get that. But now that we are so dependent on the internet connection, if you haven't thought about upgrading your internet connection, now's probably a good time to do that. Um, and when you upgrade your internet connection, you know, they will give you a router. They will give you a box that, that plugs into the wall and, and then, you know, gives you Wi-Fi and stuff like that. Just be aware that the, the standard routers that the, the internet companies give you are fairly basic routers. They're okay, but they're not the best. Um, so if you actually want more Wi-Fi capability around your home, then you might also look at buying a better router with more power to broadcast um, and mesh systems as well. Um, these, these are the systems where you buy, you know, three little routers and they basically talk to each other via Wi-Fi, but they can amplify the signal around your home quite dramatically. Um, so, so, you know, you need to be thinking about that stuff. Um, so the self-care stuff is, is important and this, this thing of isolation. Um, make frequent phone and video calls to family, friends and colleagues. Um, I have a couple of hundred students um, on the courses this term in Smurfit and, and I was teaching last term as well um, and a lot of those students have come from abroad and they're in Ireland and they expected you know the, the Irish welcome and they got it to some extent but it's been very difficult because they're sitting alone in student residences um, and you know not being able to meet people and not being able to have the, the, the the, the normal social experience. Um, if you if you are still getting to know people, whether that's remotely um, on you know a professional level um, or, or you're just connecting with new friends or whatever, I find that I would recommend use video as much as you can because you 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 get the face to face. You get far more from that. If you but if you already know people well, I mean stop sending long emails stop sending long texts yeah pick the phone up hear a voice on the end of the line you can i find myself some some mornings you know i've sat down at eight o'clock or half eight or whatever and it's i look up and it's 12 o'clock one o'clock and all i've done is been sending emails or texts yeah and i've not actually spoken to anybody for, for like three or four hours so i'm consciously doing more of my communication by voice and video to to combat these these feelings of isolation okay um you know it's good to talk has never been more relevant um connor you've got you've got something in the chat do do, do upgrade broadband how's the one gig for reliability um i'm fine I, i've had it now a month um i found it i, I found that it's it's been pretty reliable um, we, we had one little um, downtime a couple of months, uh, a couple of weeks ago for, for a couple of hours. Um, but apart from that, but what I have noticed is shooting up the, the broadband. We did get a new router and it's probably a better one. Um, and I now can see that where before when we had, um, you know, if I was a hit on downstairs, Penny was on upstairs uh, and then the kids turned on the tablets. Um, and we're playing Roblox, you know, which is one of these online um, games. Uh, it, it would it would impact on the, the Zoom calls. So we 
So before the one gig, that was an issue. Since I put the one gig in and we got the new router, I, I can we can be on two Zoom calls and the kids can be on the, 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 the remote devices and, and we're seeing absolutely solid connections. Um, so, so that's something to think about. Um, but that's just me. Um, maybe any if there's anybody else in the room who has got um, you know good or bad um, uh, experiences, share them. Share them for Connor there um, in the uh, in, in the chat if you would. That would be great. Probably, given that this is an IMCA um, session, we've probably got a good number of consultants on the line. Um, so, you know. One of the things you should do is, is just kind of explore with your clients um, or the people that you're working with um, your current situation. Okay, so you know, uh, uh, what are the constraints that you're operating under? And I think everybody is kind of open to the fact that we are operating under constraints at the moment, that we are sharing a, a space with other people, that there are calls on our time. You know, I mean, it's, it's to my shame that I have to admit that up until this week, I had largely let Penny take on the burden of dealing with Danny and April and the homeschooling stuff. I, I normally was, was upstairs working in the mornings. Penny came down and was wrangling their homework. This week, um, she's had a thesis to get in, um, a final draft of her thesis. Um, so, so I've basically been doing the morning shift and it's been difficult to say the least. I thought I would be able to bring my computer down and pop it on the kitchen table in the middle of them, have Danny on my right, April on my left, and you know, just, just sit them down and, and get, the, get the homework done and they would sit quietly and do it. Yeah, little did I know. <laughs> um, so if that's your reality, then you need to kind of share that with your, your, your clients and, and try and organize a pattern for work and for the day uh, and for work delivery that is doable, that is doable without totally stressing you out, um, that allows you to, to address your other required kind of deliverables, um, whether those are personal or, or family or whatever as well. The third point I think there is really important about asking for clarity. You know, um, you know assumption is a very dangerous thing. And I think that the open communication and open sharing of, right, well, these are my current challenges, okay? What are your expectations from, from me? What are the things that you must have from me and at what time of the day or the week or whatever? Uh, and what is what, what are movable feasts, that kind of stuff, okay? Um, so I think just opening up that conversation is incredibly valuable when you are dealing with other people. Um, whether those are clients, whether those are managers, whether those are colleagues, whether those are co-workers that you're working with, um, you know, on a team or whatever. Um, don't assume that everybody is in the same boat as you are because nobody is. We're all in very, very different home situations. Do you have a challenge over kit? Okay, so share those challenges, you know, technical, kit connection supplies, backup options, stuff like that. What would happen if your computer died tomorrow? Do you have another computer in the house? If you have another computer in the house, is it three years since it's been turned on? Okay, so, you know, if, if this computer blue screened on you and, and, and everything, you know, died, um, have you got your main applications loaded on a spare machine? so that you could switch over within an hour or two or, or whatever, okay? Do you have all your data um, backed up? Okay, so have you got a Dropbox account or a Google Drive account or a Backblaze or something like that where all the data on your computer is constantly being backed up to somewhere else? And, and just having a USB drive that every now and then you plug in and physically do a backup ain't good enough anymore, okay? Because you forget to plug those drives in. So if we're working from home now, and certainly as professionals, if we're working from home, one of the costs of doing business from working from home is to subscribe to some kind of an automated cloud backup system. 
I pay Dropbox, I think $150 a year. And that gets me two or three terabytes of, of, of storage where my laptop and, and Penny's iMac upstairs, um, all the data is constantly being backed up into the cloud. And if one of our machine dies, then I can just log on from another machine into Dropbox and all my work is, is up there. Okay. I also have a Backblaze account, which is doing exactly the same thing. So uh, that's cloning basically both those machines up into the cloud on a constant basis. Uh, I don't have to worry about losing my files. But some, at some point, one of your computers will die and you will lose files. And that's, that's unprofessional these days and it's not really acceptable. Um, so you need to be thinking about this stuff. Okay. Yeah, well, you know, <clears throat> that's a really interesting point, Brian. It's not just the connection that we need to be aware of. Okay. Um, you know, so, so have a backup for, for WebEx or for Zoom or for Teams. Yeah. So don't just rely on one setup. Um, did any of you get affected in, in recent weeks um, by the, the Google Drive out outage? When was that? I think it was just before Christmas, wasn't it? I'm not, I can't remember quite when it was, but for, for like a morning, Google Drive was down. <laughs> Yeah, and what I I had a number of quite important spreadsheets that I was working on at the time, and and for those three or four hours I just couldn't get to them. Um, so so if you have stuff that you're working on and it's only online, make sure it's also synchronized locally onto your laptop, so that if your online connection fails or the the service goes down, and I mean who would have thought that Google Drive would ever go down? You know, I kind of like assumed that it wouldn't but it did so again you've got to got to kind of plan for these worst cases and connor's put in the backblaze.com um, link there yeah I, I highly recommend black blade backblaze uh, it just sits in the background it's it's very very low maintenance in terms of the the bandwidth that it uses up but anytime you make a change on your machine it just squirts it up to to your backblaze um, folder um, and you can go back and, and restore a whole machine or just one file or whatever uh, remotely. So a very, very good service. <clears throat> Your home working space. So let's get practical. Um, it's, it's always interesting seeing where people are on, on the Zoom call, isn't it? You know, I've got a few people. We've got Pat there, um, you know, and he's got his bookshelf behind him. So he's, he's got a, a study um, area or whatever. And, uh, and stuff. I can see Ferret in there, um, similar, um, similar, similar um, situation and stuff. Katrina looks like she's in the office. I don't know. Are you at home or in the, no, you're, at, you're in the office, Katrina. Well, I'm very fortunate. I, I look like I'm in the office, but I'm one of the few that's very fortunate to have an, uh, a separate place to work from home. So that's yeah. just a photograph of the office because I miss it. <laughs> no. Yeah, <laughs> don't we all? It's just a big <laughs> library. That's right, yeah. Super. Whereas my photograph behind me is, 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 is a place I miss as well. That's, that's, that's the beach in South Africa that uh, we haven't seen for three years now. Um, but, uh, but yeah. So if you can, and that's a big if, isn't it? Because we can't all. Um, but if you can, do set up a place where um, you can set up a desk and a chair um, and, and you know, have as your working space. Ideally, in a room where you can close the door. You know, that's a very aspirational room, isn't it, on the slide? Um, <laughs> my rooms don't look that clean and, and uncluttered, I, I tell you. Um, one of the things you also need to think about, and it's really, really important, is what's behind you. Because the camera is pointing at you. So a lot of people just think about the workspace and they look at a workspace from, from the point of view of looking at the workspace. But, but almost more important these days with Zoom is, is what's behind you. Um, so, so what you do not want behind you are windows, okay? None of you should have a window behind you. Um, <clears throat> ideally, you don't want a bright light behind you either. So just, just scan the, 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 the people who have their video on at the moment on, on the Zoom calls, okay? And, and just pick up the people who, when you look at them, yeah, there's distracting elements in the background. 
Okay, and very often a bright light is a distracting element. So sometimes all you need to do maybe is just shift the laptop round by 90 degrees so that you're not pointing at you know that bright light or that window or whatever. Sometimes you may need to change the angle of the laptop and I'll show you a little little thing I bought recently um, for, for doing that, that, that sorts that out. But really think about that stuff. Um, give yourself a big enough space that you can work effectively. I mean, but you know, not everybody's got, got the space to go and buy a big work desk and stick it in the house. Um, so you may have a, a smaller one, but then maybe you can get an under, under desk set of drawers or something like that. And, and tidy up that area because you're spending a lot of time now at the computer in this area. So make it a, a pleasant place to be as far as you can. Okay. Um, it, it should be well lit, ideally with natural light. If not, then you're going to need to get some lighting and we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, make sure you've got a decent chair. Now, <laughs> you know, do what I do, what I do, not what I say. Isn't that how it goes? Um, I'm sitting on the kitchen chair at the moment, at the kitchen table. Um, and, and to be honest, quite a lot of my time is spent there and it's not good. It's not good for my back. Um, and I, I really should get a better chair that I can use while I am sitting in the kitchen if, if, if Penny's got the study upstairs. Um, but just be aware that, you know, if you sit poorly, if your ergonomics are bad, thanks, Connor, um, then, you know, you are going to end up with back strain. You're going to end up with aching shoulders. You're going to end up very achy and, and poor. So I, I invested in a new office chair for upstairs. Um, it's only 100 to 120 euro or something. You know, you don't have to spend a huge amount of money on one, but get yourself a decent chair. Um, maybe you can ask your employer. Yeah, a lot of employers have made a, a small amount available for equipping people with, um, you know, a new chair um, or you know, even a new laptop or whatever. Um, I, I was dealing with one of the county councils and I know that they went around everybody um, who, who now has to work from home uh, and offered them, you know, they could either take their chair from the office uh, or they would ship out a, a chair to them and stuff like that. Again, have those conversations um, if, if you haven't kind of got that stuff in place. Um, yeah, and a good cushion can help as well. Maria's just put that in the chat. Yeah, that's a good, that's a good tip, Maria, um, because it can just raise you up a little bit and it can also give you maybe a bit of lumbar support if you, if you put it behind your back. Um, yeah, okay. Is your equipment up to the job? Is your home computer up to the job? Are you being asked to use your home computer? I think a lot of employers have now realized that, you know, they need to kind of do something about this. A lot of employers have allowed people to take their, their laptops home, their office laptops home, or they've shipped the computer from the office to your home and stuff like that. But if not, then again, that's the conversation to have because maybe, you, you know, your home stuff um, needs to be kept separate from your work stuff or is underpowered or is old or, or whatever. The third point here is one of my most important tips that I'm going to give you today. Um, and, and it's one that, that I kind of never really thought about because I'm an XIT manager. Um, but if you possibly can run a direct Ethernet cable from your router to your computer. Okay. If you do that, and, and you can go online to, you know, alara.ie or, or one of the, 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 the kind of Irish suppliers, I'll, I'll put that in the chat, alara, they're, they're the guys I use, they're out in Park West. Um, just order a, you know, 10 or 20 meter or however long it needs to be to run from the router to wherever your computer is, um, ethernet cable. So this is the network cable. And you basically just plug one end into the into the um, the router, and then the other end will normally go into the laptop. Uh, now, if you if if the Ethernet cable your laptop doesn't have a port for an Ethernet cable, I mean my MacBook doesn't have a port for an Ethernet cable, for instance. But I just bought a little dongle with a Lightning connector at one end and an Ethernet um, RJ45 um, port on the on the other end, and and then you're good to go. The benefits are that if you're on a cable connection, you're, you're basically on full speed. So whatever your internet connection is coming into the house, that comes into the router 
and then get squirted straight down the cable. And as long as you've got either Cat5 or Cat7 um, cabling. So Cat, I just, just buy Cat7, okay? It's a little bit more expensive, but I mean, you're only talking another 10 or 15 euro or something. Just buy a Cat7 cable, that'll give you gigabit ethernet speeds. So basically whatever speed you've got coming into the house, you will get to the computer. Whereas if you work on Wi-Fi, you can expect to get at best half to a third of the speed coming into the house will will get to you via Wi-Fi. So it's a much slower connection. And also the problem there is, you know, if somebody else turns on the iPad or a, another machine in the house that's using Wi-Fi, now you're competing with those other Wi-Fi devices for that limited bandwidth. Um, once you plug into Ethernet, you're not competing probably with any other one, any other um, devices. So that can make a huge amount of difference. And whenever I'm on a, an important Zoom call, um, I, I make sure that I'm on an Ethernet connection. Okay. Uh, you can get different type, kinds of Ethernet um, cables. You can get flat ones and braided ones and stuff. I, I find that for ho you know, running one around the house, if you don't want to be drilling holes in the walls, that the flat ones are great because they can go under a carpet uh, or they're pretty um, unobtrusive if you run them around the skirting boards and stuff like that. Um, and again, if anybody online is, is in that business or, or whatever, pop your link in the chat so that everybody knows that you're, you're there and uh, we, can, we can kind of you know, give, business, give business to each other on, on that stuff. Using two screens, <clears throat> I would highly recommend that you get a second screen if you can. Um, because it really is a productivity enhancer. Uh, it gives you more screen real estate. You can have, you know, your email up in one and, and Word in another, uh, open in another part of the window. And then on the main screen, you can have Excel open or, or whatever. Um, I find it's invaluable. Um, a little trick though, um, flat screen 4K TVs are a lot cheaper than big monitors. Okay. Um, last, last Black Friday, I, I went online. I spent 250 euro on a, a Samsung, no, Toshiba. Um, 42 inch um, flat screen TV um, and we mounted it on the wall of the kitchen um, in, in a little alcove space that we've got so, so I'm on the kitchen table with my MacBook in front of me and then just above the MacBook is the bottom of the 4k TV looking at me so I've got I've got this huge big screen um, as well uh, and it's absolutely brilliant uh, and it's a lot lot cheaper than buying a, a, a you know a full-on computer monitor um, you probably also need to then buy some kind of a stand, a vase of stand, if you're going to mount it on the wall. Um, but the, the TVs are so light now that, that that's just not an issue. If you do get one of those wall mounted stands, get one with an arm. OK, and that allows you to move the screen um, to whatever angle you, you, you need to be at. Um, and, and again, they're only, you know, a few tens of euros, the, these arms, and, and they support the, the TV absolutely fine. Printer and ink, um, you know, you may not have had a particularly, you know, good home printer. We're probably not using printers that much at the moment anyway, but if that's something that you need, um, then again, that's maybe a conversation to have. Um, and, and a VPN, a virtual private network. Um, for, for some of you, you know, there's highly confidential information going to and fro. Um, it might be worth investing in a VPN subscription. Uh, where your, your traffic then is encrypted um, and stuff like that. So your IT department should be able to help you there. Um, if, you, if you're if you a self-employed contractor and you don't have an IT department, I don't know, Pat, do we have do we have people who could advise members on things like VPNs in, in the IMCA? I'm sure we do. Yeah, we do. And we'll be putting up those links afterwards for yeah. tips and tricks. So, yeah. Yeah, fantastic. If you are in a crowded space at home, it's, it's probably you know, not ideal where you are. Um, you're not in an office environment. You know? So you've got kind of two options. You, you've got a physical background or you've got a virtual background. So a physical background, um, you can hang a curtain behind you. You can put yourself facing you know, with 
doors or something behind you, a neutral, neutralish background or whatever. And I'm in my kitchen at the moment. Yeah. And and it's it's you know, it's not what you really want to be having as a background. So I'm just gonna turn my, my virtual background off. Okay. So there, there's where I'm sitting at the moment. <laughs> and you can see all the pots and pans and stuff, and, and, and uh, that's not really what you want, is it? So what I have is I have a set of virtual backgrounds set. So when I'm doing my Smurfit teaching, that's the image that I put up on my on my Zoom call. I've, I've just opened up the Zoom settings here so that I can I can change them. OK, and I've got two or three kind of backgrounds that I can use for that. Um, if I'm doing some some kind of training for Irish Times or whatever, then then that's the that's the background I use. Yeah. And then if I'm doing one of my photo club talks or whatever, I've got a, I've got a number of backgrounds that I've set up that, that I can use for that. OK, so that's a little trick, you know, set up a set up a background for Zoom um, and it's just an image. And then if you if you don't know about these virtual backgrounds, if you if you have a look at Zoom and where it says stop video, there's a little down arrow um, next to stop video on your Zoom call. Um, if you click on the, the down arrow and then go to choose virtual background, yeah, then you get into a little dialogue settings box and there's, there's a few virtual backgrounds that Zoom provides, but you can click on that little plus sign over on the right um, of where it says virtual backgrounds uh, and you can upload your own images. So just put together an image and, and you know, your logo or whatever um, on the image uh, and then upload that image and then you can choose it as a virtual background. Now, <laughs> it doesn't work for everybody. Pat, do you want to share your little story about why, <laughs> why you don't have a virtual background? <laughs> well, I was sharing this with Joe and uh, speaking against myself, my inner cavern man came, came over me and uh, I was up in uh, Harvey Norman's uh, replacing a, a, an iMac and to save myself a few quid and falling uh, for the, the, the offer of that from the uh, rather um, potent salesperson, I uh, went and got an i3 Apple Mac, um, whereas I should have probably gone for the i5. So as a consequence, um, I'm unable to share on this particular platform screens. And I think the screens are very potent because they do give you the flexibility to work anywhere, mm -hmm. uh, which is, you know, the ultimate kind of freedom in terms of uh, working from home. But uh, as I said, my inner cavern man overcame me. And uh, um, because of that, I am uh, unable to share screens, but I'll live and learn. Thanks, Joe. Yeah, no problem, Pat. No problem. Pat. Uh, Roman's just put an interesting question into the chat as well. Um, are there copyright issues when just taking backgrounds from Google? Yes, there are, because you know the, the background that you take may be one that, that does have copyright associated with it. But if you if you do a search uh, and you go into the kind of search settings in Google, um, you can find royalty-free images. Okay, so royalty-free images have been made available, um, and and you don't then have to pay to use them. Um, so if you if you just search for, for royalty free images, then um, you would be OK to use that. Or as Katrina says, and, and that's what I've done. I mean, all my backgrounds I've, uh, are my own photos. Um, so um, you can choose from your own photo gallery if you've got some, some decent images. And there are some websites that have free photography, which we'll post as well. So you can actually download uh, some background stuff, which are very, uh, very good as well of, of professional quality. Absolutely. Yeah, that's it. So make your, yeah, Connor's just saying, make your own background in PowerPoint. And then when you do the save as of that, that file, um, save it as a .png uh, and that works. Yeah, Unsplash um, is, is one well-known um, royalty free, free background as well. And Canva, uh, which is a tool I use all the time, uh, is a great way to do backgrounds. In fact, this, these ones that I did, um, you see with the little, this two will pass behind me and, and the, the, the lines and stuff. That's a, just a Canva template. And then I just drop one of my own images into it um, and set up a few of those. The other option is to change your physical background. And, and I, I, I don't know, this only, this only came to me um, as we were having discussions about this, um, me and Penny, um, reason, uh, reasonably recently, because Penny, for some reason, hates these virtual backgrounds. Um, the, the, you know, the, the, there's a little bit of movement around your hair and stuff when you, uh, and she says she doesn't like being on a virtual background in front of her clients and stuff like that. Um, so I started kind of thinking about this and, and I was on to um, digitalprintingisland.ie um, recently, just ordering some business cards. 
uh, and I was having a look at their pop-up stands. You know these 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 roll-up stands that you get from 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 you know these ones that we've got here. Um, so what I did was I, I I had a look at the product, and they've really come down in price. Um, this was forty euro for their their silver version, their, their kind of second, not the cheapest one, um, the next one up, which is a little bit hard more hard wearing. So I ordered one last week. Um, so I just did this as a as a as a um, I just did this in Photoshop, put my Houghton Photography logo on, on the top there. And what I did was I figured out how, how high it needed to be above my head, yeah, if it was sitting behind me here um, to, to show in the Zoom screen. So you see on my virtual screen where you can see my face at the moment, you can see a little bit of waterfall above me and stuff like that. Well, well when I put this up now behind me in the kitchen, Houghton photography, professional photography training is right above my head in shot. Um, and then what I'm, it's not quite wide enough to fill the whole of the, the width here. So what I'm also going to order is just two white ones uh, and I'm going to put those at an angle. So, so I'll be in this little kind of little, little space um, of, of the three stands behind me, but, but that will allow me then to, to have, you know, whatever I want behind me uh, without having to use a virtual background. And, and that's going to cost me less than 120 euro. So, so that's something to think about. Um, you know, if you... I would note there, Joe, as well, that they have an option on their, the gold ones to actually get a 1200 millimeter uh, broad right. one. Yeah. So that actually, um, from just a white screen or whatever you wish to do behind you, um, gives you a very professional feel. It's encapsulated. It's a studio feel um, without having the burden of being um, challenged with, for instance, bandwidth with your PC and so on. Yeah, yeah, because the virtual background also does impose a slight um, uplift in terms of what it's asking your PC to do. So, yeah, Digital Printing Island, I highly recommend them. Um, as I say, I've bought one of their products already and I've got more on order. Um, so they're pretty good. Um, Morgan, um, in terms of storage, would you recommend cloud storage over local storage? Um, not over local storage. I think you need both. I, th I think you should you should have a, a physical copy of your 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 data. So buy yourself you know buy yourself a four terabyte USB um, drive or whatever, and and have a, a copy of your data locally, um, but then also have an external. I mean they always say three, don't they? They th three three sets of data, um, one on your laptop, one on your, um, your your external USB, and one in the cloud. And typically, um, I've got an Amazon delivery knocking at the door. Just, just give me one second to, to grab that, will you? Because there's only me and the kids in the house. Um. So as, as Joe was saying, uh, just on that digital uh, background, we get a lot of questions on this. And, um, you know, people, uh, I suppose, have different views on it. Um, clean is well, best. <laughs> it's Penny's birthday on Saturday, so um, I, I didn't want to miss the, uh, miss the delivery. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was just kind of uh, segueing as you were standing off to get the very vital uh, birthday gifts uh, um, for, for the lovely Penny. But we were just kind of reflecting that, you know, a clean background, really, an uncluttered background, and I say that with a lot of books behind me, is your optimum. Um, and to copper fasten what Joe said earlier, you want to take um, any um, confusion or kind of, uh, I suppose, um, opportunity for people to be looking over your shoulder at what's going on behind. They really want to be looking at you and what you're saying. And so neutrality and neutral background is really what you desire. And a lot of you, have, I have to say, commend you um, when I look at your backgrounds are, are there, thereabouts, but keep it pale and, and kind of fairly neutral as much as possible. Yeah. And I mean, you know, if you look at my current background, it's totally against that, what, whatever what Pat just said. But but my, the background that I've got behind me right now, I've, I've been using kind of my different photography backgrounds with, with my photo club talks, for instance. So that actually starts a conversation with the photo club, you know, oh, where did you take that? And is that one of your photos and all the rest of it? So, so you can use your branding and stuff like that. Um, yeah, okay. What's this one? Brian, yeah, the International Court of Justice came across the door in the photograph, the party room label, <laughs> but it can raise a smile. Yeah. Yeah, so you know, you and you can use these backgrounds. I, I use them in class as well. Um, sometimes if, I, if I'm teaching a class or whatever, I, I will actually set up a set of different backgrounds. And as I'm moving from topic to topic, I can actually use the backgrounds to kind of ask questions. 
um, of the students or, or prompt a response or something like that. So you can actually get quite creative uh, with the use of these backgrounds and things. You've got to think about your presence on screen, okay? So don't have bright lights behind you. You should be lit from the front, ideally. Ideally, you should have some side lighting. So I'm in the kitchen and I've got a big um, window over on my right hand side. And you can see that this side of my face is, is, is lit more brightly and, and there's nothing really lighting me from the other side. Um, well, that gives you a little bit of depth. OK, and so you come over better on screen. So you don't want you don't want too too bright, but you do want, you know, enough light falling forwards onto your face or at least off to the side and onto your face. Um, Patricia, as a photographer, do I use a green screen? Um, I, I have done in the past. Um, I, I'm finding with Zoom particularly that the virtual screens are so good. I don't need to use a, Zoom, a green screen. Um, Elgato do a pull up green screen um, so if you just type in if you if you google elgato um, they do the little cam link as well that you can um, link your camera to to video and stuff but they do a very good pull up green screen that i think is about 1.8 meters or two meters wide so it's good enough to put behind you um, uh, and, and that's about 150 euro um, so yeah yeah Katrina, great point. You, you know, working from home, turn your video on, engage with people, see them in the frame. Do you want to talk to that, Katrina? Sure, yeah. I mean, I think that it's, um, and I'll be very honest here, a lot of people come across and they say, oh, I've got broadband issues. Um, you've got an awful lot of broadband issues is what I'd yeah. say to some of those people. Uh, <laughs> you, need to, you need to check it out. Honestly, it really comes across as very standoffish and you're not fooling anybody. And you're really telling me as the chair of a meeting that you don't really want to engage in my meeting and it's actually quite insulting. So one of the rules that we actually have at work and it works quite well is you turn it on at the very beginning. You engage, you say hello to everyone. Then we often, particularly if we're presenting because people are working from home, you can find that it does impact the camera, but at least you've said hello, you've smiled and you've, you know, you've interacted and you've engaged. I like I, I really take umbrage when people keep their camera off the whole time. I think it, I think it's delivering a message. And, and if you don't realize that, then you should realize that would be where I would come from. I ask all my students every term to, to give me a, a kind of reflective feedback piece. Um, and I got 70 or 80 of them last term from one class and um, 50 or so of those reflective pieces mentioned this issue and said, because one of the things I say is what do, what should I change for next term? OK, and um, 50 of those 70 pieces that came in mentioned, they said, ask everybody, make it mandatory for people to turn their cameras on during class. Okay, And that's the students because they're all feeling isolated and they want to see each other uh, and, and stuff like that. So, I mean, it's it's not just me and Katrina saying that, you know, it, it, it's recognised as, 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 as best practice now, so stuff like that. Okay. Um, any recommendations with regard to using the computer camera versus the external one? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I would recommend the Logitech C920 as an external um, um, camera. Um, it's funny, I'm, I'm sitting here today doing this talk to you because I, I put up a blog post recently. Um, was it just before Christmas, I think, Pat, um, on how to set up your home office? Uh, and Pat read this and, and he actually ordered a couple of things off it. Um, and uh, and when you get the deck, there's there's a link to that blog post in it. Um, but uh, yeah, excellent. One of the things I, I I put in there was was get yourself a decent um, camera. So sometimes the laptop cameras are a little bit iffy. Um, little super tip on on that. Every now and then, just just yeah, just give it a wipe with a with a with a cloth or your thumb or whatever, because it's amazing how mucky our screens get. Uh, and sometimes it, the, the poor picture is just that you've got a, a, a bit of oil or something over the camera on the laptop. Um, so a couple of dimmable, dimmable variable LED lights um, to, to, to light you from the front uh, and a decent web, webcam um, will make a tremendous difference. Okay. So, so that, that is quite, quite you know, useful. We're, we're kind of 
almost on. Yeah. Oh, let me just this last slide and then we'll then we'll wrap up, Patrick. My best purchase of 2020. Yeah. And, and it's funny because Pat, Pat ordered one of these as well. And, and I've, I've bought these for colleagues and uh, and stuff like that. This is this is a little um, this is a little um, openable um, laptop stand. So you can see how, how tiny it is. Um, I, I've got my virtual background on it, you can't see. So it's a tiny little thing. I mean, it's the width of like six pencils, uh, something like that. Um, and, and it allows you to angle your laptop up, which raises the, the, the height of the screen. So then you become, you, you, the camera at the top of the, the thing is at eye level. I think it's 15, 15 or 20 euro. Uh, on, yeah, on. I, I think that's actually an, an excellent tip as a, as a really good bit of kit. If you do nothing else, I would strongly urge you to get that because you can take it anywhere with you. It's <laughs> literally, uh, I don't know if you can see here, that's what it comes in. So it's, it's highly um, uh, mobile. Yeah. You can throw it into your bag and you, you've got a very good, um, um, even from sitting up and kind of back pain and stuff like that, you're in a chair all day at the moment doing Zoom meetings. This is very helpful. And uh, if nothing else, I would highly commend you to have a look at that it is. Joe, you should be on commission for those guys at the moment uh, you're <laughs> out so many of those. i wish i was i wish i was the um there we are that there's the, there's the link to that sub stack uh, that's my blog and, and that's the article setting up the home office so so have a look at that um because there's some there's some good tips uh, for, for kit in there um, no you don't need a separate keyboard um the keyboard is is angled slightly but i actually find it very very easy um with i've got a macbook pro um, uh, and even at an angle, it's very easy to type on um, room. So, uh, yeah. I'm, I'm conscious we're, we're kind of out of time. Um, Patrick, well, well, Joe, perhaps if I could maybe just, uh, there'll be a few questions coming in and we'd yeah. ask you now folks just to put them into the chat box. But one of the things just in terms of sound, for example, okay, maybe we could just touch on that because the, the I suppose the trifecta of questions that we regularly get in the Institute is obviously sound and vision, but you've done the vision and that's very important in terms of webcams and you know the prices come commensurately down. I'd also mm. probably note within that, to go for a 1080 kind of level, um, if at all possible, go for the higher spec in terms oh, of yeah, your webcam. Oh yeah, don't go for 720. You need, yeah. you need HD. You don't necessarily need 4K, although you know 4K will allow you to switch down to 1080. But get a get a webcam that's 1080 compatible. But on the sound side, it, it kind of depends on on the microphones in your in your laptop or your your computer. But most of the time, um, I, I would recommend getting a USB um microphone so okay. i use i use a, a little blue yeti snowball okay so blue uh, yeti snowball you just google snowball they're about a about a 90 bucks or they're about, about but they're a good investment 90, 90 euro but but the thing about the thing is with with certainly with zoom um what i find is if you get a usb mic as opposed to one with a 3.5 jack okay if you if you get a 3.5 um you know jack um, that goes into certainly into my MacBook into the headphone socket, but what that does then is it shuts down the computer speakers. So now I can't hear anybody on my Zoom call unless I plug in external speakers. So a USB mic gets around that problem. So it'll give you the microphone, but it doesn't then affect your computer speakers. So that that's just a little trick that I found because I also have a little lapel mic which with a 3.5, but it's not good for Zoom calls. But, a, but a, a decent mic will, will generally improve the audio quality. So if you're going to record, you know, like a podcast or a series of webinars to clients or to for other people, um, an external uh, USB mic uh, would, be, would be what I'd recommend. Yeah. And, and equally, I'd probably say to most of you that the, the headphones, which, for example, I'm using are probably uh, seven or eight years old. They're an old iPhone set of iPhones, but they're perfectly good. And the, yeah. the quality of them stand the test of time. Yeah, those little um, earbuds work as well. Um, yeah, and yeah. it's worth investing sometimes in a set of headphones with a speaker on them uh, to just go that extra mile. They may not look the, the most beautiful in terms of, uh, now clearly I'm not challenged in that space because, you know, um, uh, my beauty will not be enhanced, good, better, and different, but they're probably worth uh, investing in, uh, in in terms of that. So um, just uh, two other observations in terms of that, Joe, we, we've a few questions come in kind of email wise, uh, just in terms of procurement uh, on this side because of the issues with Brexit in the UK mm. and a few of the, the 
suggestions we got in was about amazon.de um, and just buying yourself over moving from amazon.co.uk which a lot of us are defaulted to automatically yes. and moving over to the de and i suppose the tip i would say to you is yeah absolutely do that but further into that is they've got a dongle on that that you just hit and uh, go for the english language variant of it which is perfect um, is. and very powerful it's, and i've got some stuff they're, they're coming in within a 48 hour window Whereas that code that UK regretfully at the moment, you know, is hit or miss in terms of whether you're going to get it or not. And you have the VAT implications. So all this product is coming out of the, the, the Far East anyways. So whether it comes out of Germany or the UK or America, you go for the, the easiest one for you at the best possible yeah, I've, option. Yeah, I've switched into DE. Um, the, most of the delivery on smaller items is about eight or nine euro from, from, from Germany now. So you're paying a little bit more upfront, if you like, on the delivery, but you're not paying that VAT that you will get hit for now from the UK. Yeah. And equally, from a tax perspective, we're not going to go down that road at the moment. We'll do it another time. But you have um, uh, quite a good regime in terms of uh, working from home. And that's been reviewed by the revenue at the moment as well. Yeah. So there will be further enhancements in terms of what you can claim from working from home over and above the 320 euros a day, which is the standard uh, one. But and be mindful links. of those. Yeah, there's links to those um, those revenue sites at the end of the deck. Um, yeah. So look, guys, I'm conscious of, of your time. We've run a little bit over, but it's been really uh, helpful in terms of your sharings, Joe. And, and this is going to be with us where I don't think the genie is ever going to go back into the box where we're going to be living a hybrid working model moving forward and maybe be the better for that. We'll reduce our carbon footprint, uh, you know, and we'll also kind of probably have less commute time as well and maybe better quality time in terms of the, the level of engagement we have. So the hybrid model will be with us and we will be doing this particular session again in a couple of months time uh, just to see if what further learnings we have and hopefully we'll be out of level five at that point point. Um, just to note uh, we have Fiona O'Connor coming up and Fiona is with us this morning thankfully uh, coming up on the on the fourth and that's a really important one in terms of navigating out of I suppose the cul-de-sac of of the pandemic that we're in towards a more kind of uh, safe harbor aspect so from a resilience and a positive mental um, uh, frame of mind Fiona is really excellent in this space and we're looking forward to hearing her thoughts on that followed up by Professor Professor Joe Mahoney, who needs no introduction, he's world class in terms of management consultancy coming up on the 11th. Jim Power, as I mentioned at the outset, we're delighted to have Jim coming on The Economist. And we've we've tasked him maybe to take a quick snapshot on what Biden has meant for uh, the uh, the global economy, but also the Irish relationship in terms of, you know, what positivity that brings from an economic point of view and just maybe a snapshot of, of where we're at in terms of the implications of the pandemic. And then we've got Sharon McLean again, uh, a global player in terms of the uh, I suppose the management consultancy profession and she's looking at the digital pivot in terms of you know what's next in terms of how we communicate digitally uh, moving forward as management consultants so guys and girls thank you so much for your time joe um deeply uh, um deeply um, uh, um touched that you gave us the time it's really been a, a great one this morning very helpful and i'm sure everyone joins with me in giving you a big bull of awesome thumbs up um, we'll be sending this out afterwards uh, folks to you and just giving you the details of the tips and tricks um, and the video will come out and also the the notes i'd ask you to follow us on linkedin on twitter and eventbrite as well as a matter of courtesy and um to wrap it up i wish you all stay very safe and sound and that you and yours you gather them tight and you get through the next couple of weeks in good order and we all come out and uh, meet convivially perhaps in the rds in a couple of months time and get back to normal running again so without further ado um slong a fall stay safe and we'll be talking to you again all right thank you for your attendance god bless <laughs>